Welcome to Lecture Online and another good example of a probability distribution, a discrete probability distribution is the example we had before where x will represent the number of tosses required to get heads. So we toss it once, we get heads, there's a 50% chance that that will happen, x will be 1. We toss it twice before we get a head, x equals 2. We toss it three times before we get a head, x equals 3 and so forth. So you can see that the probability of that happening will be smaller and smaller and smaller. What's the probability that you throw the, the coin six times, toss it six times, and you'll get a heads on the sixth time? That would be one out of 64. In that case, x will be six. Now we also have a column here that shows us the cumulative probability. And it has to do more with the probability that you'll get at least one head when you toss it that many times. So for example, when you toss it once, the probability of getting head is half. But if you toss it two times, the probability of getting heads is three quarters, because you could have gotten on the first time, 50-50 chance, second time, 50-50 chance, and so therefore there's three quarters of a chance that you'll get it either on the first or the second try. There's seven eighths probability, you'll get it on three tries. There is 15 16 probability, you'll get at least one head on four tries and so forth. The reason why I put that column there will be evident when we start looking at the graphs here. Looking at the first graph, example, let's say that we do the experiment 100 times. Doesn't mean we're going to toss a coin 100 times, we're going to do the experiment 100 times, which means we're going to toss it once, toss it twice, toss it three times until we get a heads, and then we'll start over again. That's our first experiment. Now we do our second experiment. So let's do it 100 times. And the likelihood when we do that, that 50 out of 100 times, you'll get a heads on the very first time. That would be the probability, likelihood, that this would happen. If you, toss, if you do 100 experiments, the, the chances are that you'll get a heads on the second try, there'll be 25 out of 100. So you'd expect 25 events with x equal, uh, with x equal 2, because 2 means you get heads on the second time, a second try. Well, what will be the number of times we'll get heads on the third try? Well, that's 12 and a half out of 100, and so therefore that x will be 3, and the probability there would be, of course, 12 and a half out of 100 times. x equal 4 means that you get heads on the fourth try. That means that will happen 6 and a quarter times out of 100 and so forth. So you can see that the probability just continues to decrease. The number of occurrences out of 100 will decrease. So if you want to draw that in what we call the probability distribution graph, it looks exactly the same, because, but now it's normalized. So here we actually draw the probabilities rather than the number of occurrences out of the total number of experiments. Of course, if this was 1,000, then you would 500, x would be 1, 250, x would be 2, and so forth. But a probability distribution, everything is normalized in such a way that when you add up all these values, they should all add up to, you, then, you guessed it, it should add up to 1. That means if we add up 1 half plus a quarter plus an 8 plus a 16 plus a 30 second plus a 64, that will add up to 1 eventually. And this is what this graph uh, depicts. What that means is the x equal 1, that's a 50-50 chance, so probability is 1 half. x equal 2, that is a quarter chance, add up to 1 half, you get 3 quarters and so forth. So you can see that if you uh, keep on tossing the coin, eventually the cumulative probability will add up to 1 if you do it an infinite number of times. In reality, you never quite get there because you always get to the halfway point of the distance that's remaining. So looking back at this graph, the probability distribution function shows that there's a 50-50 chance. X will be 1, meaning that you'll get a heads on the first try. There's a 25% chance, 1 out of 4, that heads will appear on the second try. There's a 1 8 or 12.5% chance that x will be 3, meaning heads will appear on the third time. There's a 1 16th probability that x will be 4, meaning heads will happen on the fourth time and so forth. And so this is a, what we call a probability density or probability distribution function compared to the uh, number of outcomes for the value for x, and that would be a fraction of the total number of experiments that you do. The graphs look identical in shape, just this is normalized so that the total sum of them add up to 1, and here the total sum of them will add up to the number of experiments that you do. That's the difference, they look exactly the same, but this is called a probability distribution graph, and this is simply a number of occurrences for each value for x. And that's how we do that.